if we were to go back and look at our grandparents, our great grandparents' diets in the 1950s and before, and you look, compare the food, okay? Compare the same meal you would have ate today versus the same meal they would have ate 50 years ago. But most, most of your things are in box bag cans and jars and there's a lot of toxicity and food chemicals and dyes and emulsifiers and thickening agents that you have no idea because they used to get their things straight from a, a, a farmer's market or the farmer and it used to be fresh because if you go back to the 1940s and 30s, most people didn't even have a refrigerator, okay? It's a relatively new invention around that time. So if we go back and look at our great grandparents and their diets, it was mostly plants. It was mostly organic, okay? Because the new agri system of spraying everything with toxins, pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides wasn't heavily in place then, okay? So it's hugely important, you know and understand that you have to be the gatekeeper of your toxicity that you put in and on your body and in your environment because we are not taught this. Even as a pharmacist, they did not teach us about this, okay? Even as a pharmacist. So toxicity, not taught about that. Again, yes, I took a tox toxicology class. Did it teach me anything about the toxicity that is in food? How to watch out for the toxicity that is in the, the water, etc. No, it did not. Number two, the number two thing we're not taught as healthcare professionals in school, nutrition. I know this sounds crazy to you because I hear people say this all the time. They went in their, into their doctor they had gall gallbladder surgery or gallbladder stones. Um, they had digestive issues. They had irritable bowel uh, syndrome. They had colon cancer. You name it. All of these things that are directly connected to the digestive system. And then they say, well, what do I need to change in my diet? When the doctor gives them a prescription, the doctor says, oh, there's, there's nothing in your diet and you need to walk. I literally, I literally have heard a doctor tell a patient with colon cancer, this has nothing to do with your diet. And your colon is literally being eaten away by cancer. And the only thing that you, that touches your colon is what goes into this pie hole. And you don't think anything has to do with what you're eating? You gotta be a damn fool to think that to be true. Okay, but the reason why they say that is not because they're malicious, is not because they're evil scientists or they hate you or they're trying to make money. It's not because of that. And I'll explain why in just a second. The reason is we're not taught nutrition at all. So when you ask your doctor a, a question about nutrition, it's literally like asking your homeboy. You're asking a layman. They don't, we do not, we are not required to take nutrition. Now I took it because one of, one of my science degrees was exercise physiology. Okay. So I had to take a nutrition course, but other than that, I didn't have to take anything. All right. So we are not required to take nutrition courses, which means that we can't guide you in the foundation of health, which is what you eat. Listen, only 5% of diseases are caused by genetic or congenital effects, okay? Congenital diseases. Only 5% of diseases, and they are the most rare diseases. They're not the things you think. They're not diabetes. They're not heart disease. They're not thyroid issues. They're not you know, things that are related to autoimmune conditions. None of those things. The things that you, when you look around in your family and you see these things are running in your family, consistent diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, you know, things of that nature. It is not, those are not in those five, 95% of diseases aren't genetic. 95% of diseases are lifestyle. And lifestyle is primarily what you eat with a whole host of other things like sunlight, water, 
movement, etc. Okay, so we don't learn the foundation of health and healing, which is what you're eating, what you're putting in your pie hole. Okay, so it makes sense why we're so sick. Okay, so I want you to think about this for a second. And this will help you know that what I'm saying is true. When you go into a hospital, you ever visited someone in the hospital or been in the hospital yourself and had to stay there as an inpatient and see the look at the food that they give people who are in the damn hospital. It is processed junk food. Things that are in plastic wrappers, a little bit of ice cream, a scoop of this, some highly processed meat, some highly processed mashed potatoes, some genetically modified corn, okay? Now, that's what they're feeding people who are actually sick and in the hospital, okay? But here's why I really want you to take a look at for a second. And then you'll really know that they do not teach us nutrition. Otherwise, we're just being intentionally ignorant. Look at the cafeteria, okay? Where most of us as healthcare professionals go to eat, eat on our break. Look at the food they're serving there. Highly processed, unhealthy food in most hospitals. Look at the restaurants that are in hospitals. Most restaurants I see in hospitals are like Taco Bell and McDonald's. I literally worked at a hospital that had a McDonald's in it. And guess what? You would see healthcare professionals, doctors, pharmacists, and nurses in line on their break at McDonald's getting food. That has to tell you we know nothing about nutrition. We were not required to take it. We know nothing about it. Everything that most doctors tell you about nutrition is layman's advice. It's stuff they Google. Okay, it's stuff that they think is true. Okay, and that is very dangerous. Okay, and take a look at most healthcare professionals. Most healthcare professionals, although they pour their heart out to their patients, spending 14 and 16 hours at the hospital, most healthcare professionals are unhealthy too. They're on just as many medications as you are, they're just as overweight as you are. I remember being at a potluck. Um, at work and one of the doctors bought in a, a seven cheese macaroni. And when you went to take the spoon to run the spoon through it, to stir it up, I mean, it sounded like mayo. It was so thick going through it. And I was like, man, that's going to give you a heart attack. And he was like, don't worry about it. I'll just take another one of my Lipitors, which is, <laughs> which is for cholesterol. So it tells you we know absolutely nothing about nutrition. They do not require us to learn it. And that is a foundation of health and healing. Number three, the microbiome. Okay, that's the good bacteria in your gut. But here's the other thing. You have a microbiome in your gut. You have a microbiome on your skin. You have a microbiome in your nostrils. Women have a microbiome in their vaginal canal. You also have a microbiome inside of your, your, your mouth as well too. And here's just a few functions of your microbiome, that, that good bacteria garden in all the places that I just named. Helps you to digest and break down food, okay? That sounds pretty important because you can eat all the healthy food you want, but if you can't break it down, you can't get the nutrients out. And it, go, it turns into waste in your body and can't be transported out of the body because it's not pro properly broken down. And now it turns into a toxin, okay? So it helps to digest food. 70 to 80% of your immune system comes from where? Your microbiome. So if you're a sickly person, you probably have an unhealthy microbiome. Number three, it helps with mental health. It is key and instrumental for both serotonin and dopamine. We know dopamine gives us that I accomplished something you know, um, that feel good feeling that we get when you get like a thousand likes on Instagram or on YouTube, thousand views or whatever it is, and you feel good because you you feel recognized. Guess what? That's dopamine. And guess what? The microbiome, it helps to produce dopamine 
and also serotonin. And this 90% of serotonin and serotonin is known as the happy molecule. Okay. Because it keeps us happy. So as it drops down, guess what? We get less and less happier. Okay. So an unhealthy gut leads to mental health issues like depression, anxiety, etc. All right. It's also good for the skin as well, too. So you got skin issues. As I told you, we got a microbiome here. We got a, the microbiome, even in our gut, is intimately connected with our skin as well, too. But the microbiome in, on our skin helps to protect us, okay, from fungus and bacteria. But it also converts the oils that are coming out of our skin into like a natural moisturizer. This is why when you eat healthy and you have a healthy microbiome, your skin looks glowing. And the, and the tone is great as well, too. All right. Also, the microbiome produces its own antibiotics, meaning it can produce antibiotics. Those ones that you get, you know, from the synthetic kind, the prescriptions, the microbiome is capable of producing its own antibiotics to fight off viruses. I mean, to fight off bacteria, but it also can produce things to fight off viruses as well, too. OK, and I'll tell you this, the prescription antibiotics kill your microbiome. Put that in perspective for a second. They kill. They absolutely kill and murder your microbiome. All right. And then also it helps to maintain blood pressure as well, too. This is why unhealthy gut to, can lead to high blood pressure as well, too. And that definitely was part of my problem as well, too, because I definitely had an unhealthy gut.